What's up everybody? I hope you've all been enjoying your weekend by popular demand and by popular I mean like five thumbs up. I'm going to be doing a video on my experiences at Carnegie Mellon University. There's nothing technical going on in this video today, just a little bit of storytelling, a little bit of me getting personal and pretty much just sharing a bunch of stuff that happened throughout college that hopefully you guys find useful. All right, let's do it. Carnegie Mellon or CMU is a relatively small private school in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's not only known for engineering, it has world-class drama program, which produces Hollywood stars, has a really good business and architecture program. So the campus has a really good mix of people, but you know, College of Engineering, 90% male. Okay, so first thing is that when I was a senior in high school, I did early decision to get into CMU. Early decision is when you pick one school that you want to apply to early, and if you get in, you have to go. If you really know where you wanna go or which program you wanna be a part of, if you're in high school, I would strongly recommend early decision. It's a little bit scary because you're really locking in potential four years of your life, but it's gonna greatly improve your chances and you'll be compared against much fewer students. If you know what you wanna do and you have the perfect school in mind, just do early decision, but take your time with it too. Even if you're just in high school right now, you really can't afford to waste any time. Transferring schools, switching majors, switching programs, it all eats away at your time. Remember, don't waste your time. It's pretty much everything you have. And if you're really young, you'll understand that more later. So the first thing that happened when I got to CMU was this crazy feeling of little fish, big pond. In high school, you're probably a big fish in a little pond. You're top of the class, you're relatively smarter than all your classmates. The moment you get to college, the level just rises up a lot and everybody around you was the top of their high school class. So this is something you just have to mentally prepare for a little bit. If you decide to go to an engineering school, you won't be the smartest. You have to get used to getting terrible test scores and everything's going to be much more competitive. In high school, I had a pretty easy time. I thought I was pretty smart. I did well on AP tests, SATs. When I think about high school, I just think about playing, having fun. On the other hand, when I think about college and CMU, all I remember is working my ass off. Even in some of the introductory engineering classes, I felt like I couldn't keep up sometimes. In any engineering program that you might apply to, you have to be ready to feel like the stupid one. Don't worry, everybody internally feels like the stupid one, they just don't let it show. The one thing I can say about CMU's engineering program is that the introductory classes and all engineering classes, they're just straight up really hard. What you have to realize is that world-class people are putting these classes together. These are people at the top, top, top of their fields. The classes, the homeworks, the lab assignments, it's not just some scribbles and notes that the professor puts together. Every single one of those classes is carefully over the years, over decades, fine-tuned by professors and crafted to be perfect, almost perfect. So the other thing that was particularly challenging about engineering school, CMU's programs, is that it really, really sucks when you fall behind, even by one homework assignment. When you're picking up engineering, especially in the early years, everything is cumulative. Everything builds on top of each other. The moment you don't understand one level or you don't understand a basic fundamental, you're screwed. You're not gonna understand anything from that point on. So my one advice here is that when you're taking classes, you have to make sure yourself. It's a personal thing to really understand and digest every concept that's introduced to you. The professor can introduce it to you, but he's not gonna have a private session with you. You have to go back after the lecture, after you do the homework, and just make sure you really understand it before moving on. With all that being said, the other tip that I kind of want to give if anybody's thinking about engineering school is to not avoid the hard classes. You should take the hard classes. 
The hard classes are the ones that you'll kill yourself over, but you also just gain the most out of. If you're going to a private school and you're on full tuition, you're paying a lot, a lot of money just to be there. I kind of did the math out and every lecture I would miss would be like 50 to $100. That's what every lecture costs. So if you just sleep in one morning, you have to be careful not to try to burn yourself out by taking like three or four engineering courses. It might be too much, but you definitely shouldn't coast. You didn't go to engineering school to just get by, take the easy classes. You're there to take the hard classes and learn as much as you can. You're spending so much money just to be there that it's not worth it just to take the easy classes. It's almost like a waste of money. My major at CMU was called electrical and computer engineering, which is usually two separate majors, but they just call it the same thing, electrical and computer engineering. When I first started out, my first couple years at college, I focused more on the electrical side, which was circuits or signal processing. Towards the end of my undergraduate, I started focusing a lot more on the computer engineering side of things, which is integrated chip design, computer systems, computer architecture. Also, this whole time, I was taking some supplementary courses in the computer science department. I wasn't a computer scientist, I was just taking some of their courses to, for fun, you know. Some people actually double majored in computer engineering and computer science. Those guys are crazy, I couldn't do that. Just doing one alone was crazy hard. If I had to put it in a nutshell, I guess I majored in computer engineering with a little supplementary work in computer science. Another cool part of CMU's engineering program and probably every engineering program is that the hardest classes you probably take are the group classes. These are classes that are designed so that it's literally impossible for one person to finish it. The classes teach you how to work with and rely on other people to finish the projects. I work together a lot in different groups with my friends, but on the flip side of that, there's a crazy amount of competitiveness in all these schools. There's just a crazy amount of pressure you have to compete with all your peers around you. You constantly feel under pressure, inadequate, and slower than all your peers all the time. I felt that for like five years. There was one class I took where they posted the scores of every single student publicly for every single coding assignment. By doing that, you could literally just log on and see exactly how your code did compared to everyone else in the class. There's always a person above you. There's always the person that solved the problem better than you. It doesn't sound really healthy. It was also kind of motivating, but we were always under the pressure like, ah, oh, how did that guy do it? And how come I can't figure it out? So half good, half bad. You gotta be ready in your mind to deal with stuff like that, but it also instills a lot of motivation in you to try to be the best, you know? They do all this stuff on purpose. They wanna see that you're doing worse than your classmates. It's just like part of this game or something. And I guess it works. It didn't seem like it worked at the time, but I think years later you realize that it helped a lot. Now, if we move outside the classroom a little bit, it was also highly competitive on the professional or job part. Every single student is fighting for jobs and internships at the best companies with each other. You're always fighting for the same positions. When your friends get an internship at Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and you don't, that sucks, right? So I have a funny story about when I attended this job fair when I was a freshman. So these job fairs are really crowded. You have to wait in lines just to speak with company representatives. Just to hand in your resume, you'll have to wait like 20 minutes in line. So I waited in line to talk to NVIDIA, which I'm sure you guys know NVIDIA makes graphics cards, but I waited like 20, 30 minutes in line. And right when I got there, they gave me a piece of paper and a pencil and forced me to do a written quiz as like, you know, a screening process. This was when I was a freshman. I really didn't know anything. I remember looking at the quiz, picking up the pencil. I didn't know what anything meant on the paper. I just dropped everything, didn't even hand in my resume and just went back. It was pretty embarrassing. There was like 30, 40 people behind me waiting to take that quiz. 
a lot of people have asked me about finding a job and my only piece of advice for that is that any university or actually any academic establishment has a lot of resources for you to help you find a job. There's career centers. I'm almost 100% sure there's a career center that's applicable or available to you, sorry, and just go to it and use their resources. The whole purpose of the career center is to help you get a job. They can talk with you, give you tips on interviewing, set you up with interviews, tell you what to wear, all that stuff. I guarantee there's a career center available for you. Even if you're in high school, there's probably a career center. Just use it. With all that being said, I just want to reiterate my point is that you don't have to go to a top engineering school to be successful or whatever that means for you. Right now, you know, there's so many resources out now that if you really are motivated, I'm sure you could make anything happen. You don't need to go to Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Harvard. That's just like a little plus, but it's not required. The one thing that I can say for sure is that I was lucky enough to go to CMU and I still thrive off some of the knowledge that I learned there. Even to this day, even to this day, I still reference my textbooks from different classes when I just want to look up something. Even for work or just I forget how something works, I still look through those textbooks. All right, so I talked a lot in this video, I think. Um, I didn't plan it out so much, but let's just make some closing points before I end it out. The first thing is just to mentally prepare yourself for the cutthroat environment and be prepared to just feel really, really dumb. Push yourself to take challenging courses, don't coast. Remember, at any college, you're paying money to be there and there's no reason to slack off. Make sure you use that money wisely and the whole point of it is for you to sponge up that knowledge and learn as much as you can. Last point to make any college experience better is to find some friends. Don't do work in the library for 20 hours a day and just find some cool people to hang out with. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. Sorry this wasn't a technical video, just a little bit of storytelling about what college was like. If you have anything specific to ask me about anything regarding CMU or college in general, you can just ask me in the comments, I'll reply, or you can just email me directly, it's all good. I hope the information was helpful for anyone that's considering going to engineering school and I'll be back next time with something more, you know, learning. So take care and I'll see you guys next time.